Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Bezik, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astrea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. Story number one It Didn't Obey Entropy, written by Guncaster. The discovery of a contiguous stable tear in the fabric of reality was only the first in a long line of discoveries to utterly annihilate existing scientific consensus. Then uh, there came the next, and after it, yet more were found, all led a line, following a clear pattern, always near the edge of a solar system, and nearly always leading to a system with planets thought to be inhabitable or possessing of valuable material resources. It was then, years and years after following this daisy chain of wormholes through the use of drone probes and highly advanced telescopes due to lack of funding and simple trepidation amongst those with power to prepare a manned expedition. Eventually, though, another pivotal discovery was made, an utter anomaly. It was, in simple terms, impossible, inconceivable, utterly incomprehensible. What at first had been thought to be a single star at the edge of a dwarf galaxy was soon found to be a pattern repeating across the entire galaxy itself. It could not be reconciled with any cosmological model, modern or archaic, established or purely speculative. Small by the scale of galaxies, though it was, it was still a galaxy, and it just, um, it wasn't losing energy. No matter how far through the cosmological fossil record their warp jumper probes went, the expected entropic pattern never emerged. It didn't follow the believed to be inevitable expansion of the universe. Not a single of its stars had died in the hundreds of million years of their supercomputers had scrubbed through. No supernovas, no black holes, no red or white dwarves, just a perpetual galaxy wide golden age. And even as their probes approached the edge of the anomalous pygmy galaxy, more anomalies were transmitted back. Each system star possessed several artificial structures, great black rods in two series of three, and either one or two of their axes, bringing the count to either seven or eight. The scale of each outstripped any man-made structure ever conceived of. Yet, there they were, possessed of obvious signs like hangar doors, Elaborate buttresses and arches, and architectural flourishes with no conceivable point of function and statues. Each black rod was decorated by statues of what was presumed to be the builders of these structures, or at least the abstractions of them rendered in the same humongous black material as the rods. An oval head, a central trunk from which four elongated limbs sprouted, the body layered was a new per se merely an iteration upon the one of the more common patterns found amongst the myriad of species of the civilized spacefaring society. Deeper still, as the probes plunged, they found more megastructures, each grander in scale than the last. From artificial asteroid belts to colossal drone swarms, autonomously ferrying gases from gas giants to supermassive orbital works across the solar system, and wrecks, massive wrecks, wrecks from ships the size of planets, even four-limbed humanoid megastructures with joints and thrusters, and still readable warp engine signatures of such intensity that one struggled to comprehend how far and how quick they could jump. Not to mention the weapons. Each one of these dead cosmic titans bearing armaments the scale of which defied explanation the payloads of which must have threatened to reach the very edge of what was plausible within the laws of physics. Many argue that the mere existence of these megastructures called all known theories about physics into question. And they were right. But what was the strangest about all these wrecks was the lack of any suggestion that they had been wrecked where they are now rested. There was not a bit of collateral damage, almost no free-floating debris. Then... At the very center of the cosmic graveyard, in the middle of the otherwise beautiful solar system, they found a megastructure that did not ignore the probe's presence, but actively pinged it in every way the probe could receive. 
It had a flat top and a bottom from which a great chain connected to nearby wreckage, and three sides upon the gigantic alien letters were scribbled. The mega structure ejected a canister, which upon pickup and analysis, the probe found to contain several diagrams that were surprisingly close to some species recorded first contact packages, yet still very far. It included diagrams of the creator species, three physical tablets with two copies of writing on the monument, and a number of much smaller objects shaped like elongated versions of the megastructure itself, each labeled with a few of those alien symbols. It was some uh, unknown anomalous script, incomprehensible on a symbol-by-symbol symbol case. Yet, when read as an entirety, though it was inflicted several migraines upon first-time readers, it was comprehensible in full regardless of the reader's linguistic capabilities. The first tablet read as such, To those who destroy us, rest and be forgotten. For you were never gods, and with our sires of steel, we remind you of the truth. The second tablet read, To those who thought themselves our betters, gaze upon our works, ye mighty, and despair, for we are not gods, but men, and our work shall outlast yours. And the third tablet read, To those who come when we have departed, gaze upon our works, ye meek, and rejoice, for we are not gods, but men, and in our wake no world shall succumb to entropy. Never again! End of story. Story number two. The Lady of War, written by Echoing Cascade. The constant orbital barrage had been proven a fruitless endeavor. The castle's force fields had failed within an hour, but the ceramic and metal from which it was made took no damage from even the most powerful cannons aboard his flagship. Grand General Sole Master at Arms, Monon Father III, was at a loss for ideas. He had pledged his entire personal army to conquering this human settlement after the affront the Lady of War had thrown his way, and it was not looking good. His elite troops had taken the field earlier that morning. The dressed shadows of the tree's sons, they had won him many battles by clever infiltration and covert assassination. Yet they were found and soundly beaten by quadrupedal beasts the humans kept around their castles. His shock troopers, veterans of countless campaigns, were pushed back by the castle's defenders and the villagers nearby who came to protect their lord. Grand General Sol, Master at Arms, Monomonfer III, had to face reality. He was going to lose. No, he had already lost. The fact his troops had incurred no life-threatening injuries was a blessing, or more likely a testament to the Lady of War's magnanimous nature. He would sue for peace and make amends to prevent an all-out war with such a mighty race of warriors. Grand General Soul Master at Arms, Mommon Further III, walked towards the human castle. He held no weapon other than the sword he presented on the flat of his hand. The Lady of War had accepted his surrender and agreed to meet him in person. Mon Monfer, I have come to beg for peace. He knew his people could ill afford a war if this isolated castle could hold his army by itself on a moment's notice. Locating this war chief would be a priority, and maybe he could gain them as a valuable ally if he played his cards right. The Lady of War approached him and picked up the sword. She nodded. What you did was uncalled for, and I'm certain representatives from both our species will have words. But today we can have peace. At this, the humans present and General Momonfa breathed a sigh of relief. Some looked like wanting to shout, but a look from the Lady of War stopped them dead in their tracks. He was halfway out before Lady of War stopped him. Wait just a moment. There is still the matter that started all of this. I hope you haven't forgotten. At the proclamation, the other humans emitted strange noises and some patted their faces in a peculiar way. Momonfa Yes, of course. The Lady of War had taken a place behind her throne. She adjusted her eyewear, grabbed one of her books of power, and listed his transgressions. 
He returned two books a week late. A third one had scribbles on multiple pages. And you removed the protective plastic sheath from the 2320s Guinness Book of Records. And I told you this morning, if you do not pay the fine of 132 credits by the end of the month, your library card will be revoked. Momlinfer nodded. The punitive measures were rather fair now that he stopped to think about it. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below, both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.